Hello everyone, welcome to Knowledge India once again. In this particular video, we want to answer a very important question, which is how many private subnets should you create? I've seen this in many scenarios that uh, when people draw different architecture diagram within their VPC, one part is clear that we need to have one public subnet per availability zone, right? But when it comes to private subnet, it it is noticed that people many of the times go ahead and create multiple private subnets. So what we want to understand is basically the principle behind deciding it correctly. And what I would like to do is I would like to just show you some of the examples uh, right from AWS uh, website and we will try to understand this. Now in this particular architecture, there are a couple of things which I would like to point out. The first one is that you have application load balancer this one of course the intention is to show it in the public subnet which is fine but it would be a good idea if we probably draw some sort of uh, grouping like this right which shows it clearly For here we are able to guess that it is there in the public subnet but what about this one if you see looking at this particular diagram someone might just guess that uh, it is there in this particular private subnet or it is there in this particular private subnet right so uh, i would recommend that always uh, create it clearly so that uh, resources which should be there in subnet you are able to understand that that in which subnet they are currently there now if you look at this particular diagram you have got a uh, here web subnet and then you have application subnet and then you have got database subnet right uh, given the fact that we have got web servers and then app servers and then database person has gone ahead and created one uh, pair of subnet for per uh, tier in the application right or for per layer in the application okay understood so this is fine now if you just look at one more diagram this one this is also a diagram and it is there you know as a reference architecture just try to count that how many private subnets are there one two three four five six seven there are seven private subnets in one availability zone and then of course in the other availability zone right so is it is it really required that that you go ahead and put it like this that's the question now many of the times when when you are looking at uh, just a just a three tier application you know people generally overlook this thing and they go ahead and create the subnets in this manner and they think it's fine but if you follow that principle that you need that you need subnets per layer then what will happen is for for an application like this you will end up creating so many private subnets and what is the disadvantage of doing that there is a disadvantage so what i would like to do is i would like to refer this another documentation from aws which i think uh, really states this thing very clearly right uh, if you look at this particular uh, diagram here this yellow boundary is basically your vpc your vpc spans across let's say four availability zones in this region we are considering that there are four availability zones fine and in every availability zone you can see that you have one public subnet you have got one private subnet and then you also have one more private subnet and then there is some spare capacity so uh, you might say that see here also we have got two private subnets per availability zone but it is not similar to what we saw in the you know in the other diagram i would like to explain this to you see uh, you have to understand that uh, the traffic flow between two instances in case of aws is controlled using security groups right subnet as an entity defines defines a part of your network and what you additionally specify at subnet level is the routing right that for a particular subnet what would be the routing strategy or what would be the routing rules you define that using route tables and the other thing which you do is 
network ACLs which you apply at the subnet level. So let's try and understand this further. If we just uh, you know go down, you will see this. We should just spend you know two minutes on this best practices and you will understand this. Separate subnets for unique routing requirements. AWS recommends using public subnets for external facing resources. We understand that and private subnets for internal resources. For each availability zone, this quick start provisions one public subnet and one private subnet by default. Additional layer of security. AWS recommends using network ACLs as firewalls to control inbound and outbound traffic at the subnet level. Of course, every subnet has got a network ACL, right? We recommend, see here, we recommend that you use network ACLs sparingly for the following reasons. They can be complex to manage. They are stateless. Every IP address must be explicitly opened in each inbound and outbound direction and they affect a complete subnet. That's very important. Many of the times what people do is uh, they'll say that, okay, I've created a separate subnet and what I'll do is at the network ACL level, I will go ahead and, and change the rules. But you need to understand that the rules which you are adding at the network ACL level, they will apply to the whole subnet. Now, if you have some other resources in the same subnet, there may be some problems or you will have to figure out the traffic flow for all the resources in that subnet and you will have to allow the rules accordingly, right? So that's why it is written. We recommend that you use security groups more often than network ACLs and create and apply these based on a schema that works for your organization, right? This is a really, really important thing, right? This is the thing which I wanted to call out here. Number one, when you go ahead and create more and more subnets with every subnet, you lose five IP addresses, right? Kind of unnecessarily. So if you look at this particular diagram, we have got seven subnets in one availability zone. That means seven into five, 35 IP addresses are gone, right? Yeah, they do not cost anything, but if you look at an enterprise environment, if you look at an enterprise setup, uh, you carve out the private IPs with a lot of planning and uh, you would not want to just unnecessarily waste your IP addresses, right? Even, even the private ones. So uh, losing out unnecessarily on the private IPs is one thing. But other than that, it is very important to understand that yes, you can go ahead with, with multiple private subnets provided you really have a use case where you want to specify a separate network ACL with some restricted rules, let's say, and you want to specify a separate route table for that particular private subnet. There's no point in separating multiple private subnets or creating multiple private subnets and then keeping route tables and network ACLs same for all the private subnets. If you are doing that, then essentially, though you have created multiple private subnets, their nature is going to be same. So it, it is not making your, it is not making your architecture more secure if you are doing that way. That's why I, I really like this particular article on AWS documentation where they have shown this particular thing that yes, you can go ahead and have a private subnet here. But then uh, you see it's written dedicated network, dedicated custom network ACL. The idea is that if you really have some requirement, maybe you want to restrict certain IPs or, or, or certain ports because of some reason for a workload and you don't want that, uh, that, that in any case traffic should enter there or things like that, then you may go ahead and have a separate private subnet. More than the network ACL point, I think from routing perspective, it becomes a very important uh, thing. So if you really want to have a separate route table and network ACL applied to, to your private subnet, then go ahead and create a separate private subnet. Otherwise, you don't need to do that. Uh, there, there might be some other scenarios uh, where, where it is generally recommended, where you need to go ahead and have a separate private subnet. For example, uh, if you are using transit gateway, it is generally recommended that you go ahead and create a separate private subnet per AZ in your VPCs, which you are attaching to the transit gateway, right? So in that case, you may go ahead and do that. But just for, just for separating out different layers, of your application, 
do not get into creating n number of n number of different private subnets you can very well control the traffic flow using security groups and they are very powerful i hope you understood that particular point and you will take care of this while creating your architectures in future if you learn something from this one don't stop here please share it with someone and go ahead and look at other videos on our channel thank you take care and we'll see you again in the next one